How's it going, people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Forever Arsenal podcast. Um, recording this the night of, just to let you know in advance, it's the night of the game finished a few hours ago. Um, listen, we all know the result. We're all here for it. 2 0 loss to Aston Villa at the Emirates. Um, and here we are to discuss it, to review it, to talk about what went wrong because something definitely went wrong for that performance and that result. Considering I thought this would have been a nice late night stream after a comfy win, heading into the Bayern Munich game, which we can't forget about because that's just around the corner for us. Maybe that's a blessing in disguise that we need to, well, I say we, the players need to focus. But listen, the results still fresh in our minds. Big up James Lee and Jordan here to discuss midnight. It's actually, it actually is Monday over here. It's midnight. Um, Yeah, hit the like button, people do all of that stuff. Make sure you're subscribed. Lee, as always, you know, I tend to start with you, but I just tend to start with you because, you know, you're the one that goes to the games more often than not. Um, but this time around, I mean, me and James were watching on the watch along. I'm sure Jordan saw it too. Um, but towards the end, I think it was James that highlighted it, that, you know, a, a lot of the fans had left the ground. Um, you also mentioned it in your fan cam. Um, in general, what was the atmosphere like at the game before that even, you know, gets talked about? And Lee... Lee, I just want to—I just want to uh, uh, applaud what you said on your fan cam there. I'm um, only caught the clip, but I mentioned it, sort of, yeah, just because we saw it on the watch along. It then came up. I was on the FCM podcast. It came up then, and I was sort of disappointed. And I'm always a bit reluctant to be too critical because, you know, everyone has their own lives. But when you see half an empty stadium, yeah, not everyone's got an excuse for leaving that early. I'm glad you brought that up because the team are going to get it today, and the manager and. We're going to talk very, this, this is the night of, right? So we're going to be very raw about how we feel about this. We're all disappointed. And I think for that second half performance, there's got to be a lot of criticism. Obviously, you know, in a measured way to degree. But I'm with you. What you said about the fans and the form this group have been on, and then to end the game in front of a half-empty stadium when there is still a lot to play for, I'm, I, I just want you to take it from there first. I'm glad Turkish brought that up and I wanted to just back the, well, tell you that I backed what you said. Yeah, disappointed. Disappointed. <laughs> We've gone around every away ground in the last five, six weeks taking the piss out of every other fans for empty stadiums and all that night. And quite rightly so. And then when it happened to us today, listen, you can go on about loads of things today, like you know what I mean. But us fans have got to take responsibility as well. Like, you know? We are in a title race for the first time in so many years. And um, as hurt as I am and as upset as I am, and I could go around and shoot people, everybody today and whatever. Us fans today, let Arsenal Football Club down today. The, the the thing is as the thing is as much as I brought it up, I don't want it to be the focus because what oh. comes what comes first. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the, I, I think I think I think the players let us down as fans. I think the manager today let us down as fans. And 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 yes, you know, I'm I'm on I'm doing a watch along with no audio, so I can only go by what I see. But even me, who's quite you know, pessimistic, critical, um, angry about things a lot of the time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have left it. I would have been hella frustrated and we're going to get into that. But yeah, sorry. I just had to make that point. It doesn't need, well. it doesn't need a great dialogue, but I'm just glad it was mentioned. That's all. It, it's, 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 you know, you can go on about so many things today. You can go on about the manager, the players. I've, I've seen a player in, in the game, totally dominate our midfield today, like you know, um, and he ain't there's nowhere near in the class of our midfield players, let's be honest. But at the end of it, you can blame whatever you want. But us fans have got a responsibility as well. We've got a, we've got a responsibility as well. And we were all going mad, and I'm gonna be guilt, I'm guilty of it as well, and I'm frustrated about it as well celebrating Liverpool winning losing today and then not then not giving my all at the stadium today. The, the the atmosphere was a little bit nervy today, like you know. And and I don't know. I, I, I listen, I feel so disappointed today, like you know what I mean. I, I, 
I, I'm going to say it like I've watched players today out fought and out muscled by, by, by a team that's going for Champions League football, not chat title. Like, you know, disgraceful performance today, in, in particularly in the second half. But the manager got it all wrong today. I've had a person on the train today berating me on the train today like about Mikel Arteta. I've tried to defend him, but I can't after that. I can't defend that today. I cannot defend the manager's decisions today. You've gone 11 games unbeaten, 10 wins on the trot, and you're changing the midfield. I said before this game, please do not let the Champions League game on Tuesday affect us and our confidence. And it affected uh, uh, the manager, it affected the players, and it affected us fans. Absolute joke. And like, I don't think last season we bottled the title, boys. I really don't. I think we was we wasn't the better team last season. But today, <laughs> we had it in our hands. It was in our hands, and we threw it away. And we've thrown it away. And I know people will say, "Oh, it's still not over now." You don't give that don't give that to Manchester City what we've given today. Not just us, Liverpool as well. Liverpool as well showed exactly the same things and flaws in their game as we have done today. And I never was worried. James, you're right. I was never worried about Liverpool. I was never worried about Liverpool. That was always going to happen with Liverpool. I never thought I would see that today from Arsenal. From our manager, I thought we had learned lessons, and we haven't. And I, there's no excuses, and there's no excuses today. It's poor. It's it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I'm done. I'm done with the Arsenal. I am absolutely, I am absolutely done with this football club now, lot like, because that was our chance today. I'm not saying we was going to win the league if we we done it today, but that was the chance today to prove that we was ready to become champions, boys. And we might still go on and win it. I don't know. But if we do, it, it won't because we deserved it. You know, we've been given yeah. what we really like. We, we are now relying on, <laughs> can I dare I say it, Fulham, Tottenham. We're relying on other teams now when we had it all for us to do. All for us to do. I'm so disappointed with everything today. The way it all went, the way, it, the way it all went today. I have to say, like you know, um, I I agreed with a lot with your stance on the fans. I, I I don't know if I feel as doom and gloom as you do, but I do feel pretty heartbroken about the result. Yeah. Heartbroken, strong, but like it's a proper gut puncher. Where are you, Jordan? Um, I, I wasn't at the game, so I, I won't comment on the fans. Um, you know, Lee's always very honest um, in supporting the fans when the fans deserve credit. So if Lee's calling them out today, then I, I, I'll take that as, as red. Um, I've got quite a few thoughts and I'll try and rattle through them because it's a bad day. First of all, before I go any further, I want to say congratulations to he who shan't be named, who become a Bundesliga winner today. So it's slight irony and irony in that the day that Granit Xhaka won the title in Germany was the same day that Arsenal's title chances are possibly went up in flames. Um, that game today was too reminiscent for me of Brighton last year. Yeah. Oh, yes. That was that was too. I don't think it was quite as bad as Brighton because Brighton dominated from minute one <laughs> to minute ninety. Brighton scored us last year. Like that, that's one of those games that I will never forget. Brighton absolutely scored us. But it didn't score us. But it wasn't far off that. They they their tactics were perfect, absolutely perfect. So I want to first of all give give Villa credit because the, the not only did the best team win. This might sound harsh. It could have been four or five. It could have been four or five, um, in in my opinion. So we kind of got lucky to get away with two. Um, I'm not going to lose my head today because I don't think that this is the time to do that. I, I agree with Lee. I, I don't think the title is dead, dead. But if you're relying on Manchester City to drop points, good luck with that. So I, I think we have blown it. But there's a few players I just want to Turkish very quickly just... Just um, not dig out, but just kind of refer to because the few players I think should get some scrutiny. The goalkeeper, first of all, uh, David Raya. 
This might be a wild shot, and I am um, maybe I'm still a bit emotional after the few hours after the game. I think we've got to look for a new keeper. I think we've got to look for a new keeper, and I say that because I don't, I don't dislike, I don't dislike David Raya. But at some point, when you're going for a title, you need your goalkeeper to win you a game. You need your goalkeeper to do something that he shouldn't do. You need him to make a save that he has no right to make, just to keep you in the game. His stats this season look very, very good, but he's behind the best centre-back partnership in the league. And although I don't like discounting the goalkeeper from the defence, they're all part of it, so you shouldn't just take him away from that. Equally, if I'm Gabriel, if I'm Saliba... I'm turning around to, to David Ray. I mean, generally, I'm saying to myself, I'm saying to him, any chance, mate? Any chance you could just help us out? We've been digging, we've been protecting you for 10 games. Any chance you could just, one game, just do something crazy? So David Ray, I think something we need to discuss maybe in the, in the off-season. Zinchenko, goodbye. 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 I've never been a Zinchenko fan. Um, but last year, I thought his offensive work masked the defensive frailties. James, you can correct me here if I'm if I'm wrong. I can't think of a really good Zinchenko game this season. No, not, tw not twenty minutes, been. not forty five minutes, but like the majority of a game. I can't think of a Zinchenko game this not, season. Not to last season. season's level. He's not once that Newcastle United and, and Man United home games of January last year, where he was like a cheat code. He was getting the ball into areas I didn't think we could access from where he was. I thought, wow, like all right, defensively he's not it. But look where he gets that ball. And I'm with you, man. He's not hit that level once a season. He's had some good games. But he's not hit that level once a season. Give us 35 mil, move him on. Um, I, again, I don't remember Trossard playing very, very well when he starts. I could, I could, I could again be harsh. I think Trossard's best games in an Arsenal shirt, nine times out of ten have come from the bench. Or, that false nine. or a false nine, even. That misses a shocker. That miss, I'm, I'm hearing people saying it's a brilliant save. Nah. It's, a, it's a shocking miss. Oh, it's a sh you've got to score that. You've got to score that. Um, Gabriel Jesus. Now, hmm. I remember getting absolutely caned in the comments um, around October, November time for being too harsh on Jesus. Jesus is a brilliant player to watch. He's skillful, he's technical, and I'm glad we've got him. But my concerns back then when he was scoring goals and playing well my comments then were, but when it really matters, is Gabriel Jesus the guy that can win us a title? And although I don't think we lost a game today because of Jesus or even Zinchenko, I'm looking at Gabriel Jesus as our main man and saying, similar to David Raya, can you do something today? We need you today. Dig us out of a hole. That that back post header, the back post header thing he did early in the game, at first I gave him the benefit of the doubt that I thought at least put it back across goal Bro, just score. Just score. What are you doing? And the irony is, is we saw a striker on the pitch who, with two chances, buried one when his team needed it. His team's going for a Champions League spot, Ollie Watkins. Look what Ollie Watkins did for his team. That is what we need from Gabriel Jesus. And I'm not saying sell Gabriel Jesus. I'm just highlighting my concerns from four months ago when everyone was waxing lyrical about him were, mm, let's talk in March. Let's talk in April. And what seems to be happening now is what I thought what I thought may happen. A couple more Turkish and I'll shut up. I thought Gabriel, I thought White had a difficult game. I thought I think since Dubai, White's been arguably our best player. I thought today he, he had a he had a tough game against Tielemans and Zaniello. Was that Zaniello on on, yeah, on that Zaniello, side? Yeah, yeah. Very impressive. Very impressive. He, he, he gave him problems. Uh the Saka near post shot as well, I thought was a poor to poor decision. And my final point would be. I don't want to hear any crying about the Bayern Munich draw. Maybe they were a bit tender after that. We're in the big boy league now. The big boy league means that you have to compartmentalise a Champions League fixture and a Premier League fixture. The Bayern Munich draw isn't the worst result. But I don't want to hear anybody telling me about maybe they were in their feelings about the Bayern Munich game. No, no, no. You park that. You've got another game to focus on. If you want to be with the big boys, you have to be able to switch between the two competitions. And that, for me, was disappointing. And another thing that's disappointing, as Lee alluded to earlier on, if you needed any bigger shot in the arm than what we got today and still bottle it, for, bottle it, whatever word you want to use, that, for me, is upsetting as well. Liverpool have just lost. You should be bouncing out the dressing room thinking, oi, oi, we can effectively 
maybe not totally, but effectively put Liverpool out of this yeah. race. Exactly that. We could put Liverpool's title title um, ambitions to bed if we win this game today. Liverpool have been on the ropes for a few weeks and we blew it. We blew it. And the thing for me that's disappointing wasn't even the performance so much. There was no energy. It, it, the, the players looked like they were really flat. They looked like they, just, they didn't really... Something was weird today. Something was really... I've got more things to say, but I'm, I'm talking too much. I just think I'm disappointed in a few performances from a few individual players. But overall... I just think you had it in your hands to really go and grab this thing and and, and you didn't. And sorry, Turkish, my final, final point, and I will shut up, I promise. Again, we discussed about a month ago about Arsenal, whether they're better at being chased or doing the chasing. And I remember saying on the pod, being that catching teams up is all well and good, but at some point in the season, you have to deal with the pressure of being on top. We've been on top for a week <laughs> and we've fallen off. It's not good enough. When you're on top, you have to deal with the pressure. And for all the waxing lyrics we've done about this team, we're different. We've changed. We've learned lessons. Have we really? Have we really? Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Couldn't agree yeah. with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. If I can jump in on the performance, right? I, I saw it differently. I thought the first half we were scintillating. I thought it played well first half, James. Very first well. half. I thought Martin Erdegaard's 45 minutes was maybe mm. the best I've seen from an individual this season. I thought this guy looks untouchable. Every touch was magic in the right area. He was creating. He was building from deep. He was doing everything. And I thought, we've got Villa here. And actually, Villa was still actually throwing some punches the other way. Um, you know, they hit the post and they were making our defenders work. But I thought, you know what, that's fine. They're a good team. They're, they're fourth for a reason. Emery's a good manager. Um, and I was really impressed by the first half. Honestly, at half time, I went to eat my leftover chicken. I was chill. I was like, yeah, cool. Like second half, we can do it. And that's why it reminds me a lot of that Brighton game you mentioned, the 3-0. Because I know you said they, they schooled us from minute one to 90. But I remember in that game as well, we had lots of transition moments. Trossard, funnily enough, again, should have scored in that game. And there were moments mm. where at halftime I was thinking, we could we could be tuning up here. We've not been at our best. We could be tuning up. So, for me, everyone takes blame. Now, we mentioned the fans. And the re reason I really wanted to jump on that point before Lee came in was because I always kind of give the benefit of the doubt. But I think, like, one defeat in 12 in 2024, like... It didn't need, it, there was an opportunity maybe to show a degree of support, but whatever, cool, let's move on from that. I don't know what everyone's doing with their day-to-day -day lives. Um, the players, for me, let Mikel Arteta down massively in that first half. Because while I had while I had issues with, you know, we've done so well with Havertz up front, and then you revert him to midfield, I was thinking, what was that all about? I thought Havertz's his first half was good. Under laps, he was causing problems, he was getting into good spaces. Lee's not impressed. That's interesting, Lee. No, I'm, not, I'm not, not with that today. I thought you'd piss poor. First Ooh. half? Yeah, we got into some fucking great positions, James, and pissed it off all the time. I'm a uh, big Kai Everts fan, but he was his final thing, what he'd done, was poor today. He, he, um, he, he was... He was a, in front of goal, he should have done better, certainly. Well, there was two times he was through. But I felt he was the one breaking the line, yeah, getting us into good air. I think, I think, in, but it's not, it's not even just making good runs. I felt like his underlap uh, when Trossard played him on was brilliant. He did that quite a few times. I thought he was you know, alongside Declan Rice, working hard in midfield. I thought we were pressing well. The reason I'm mentioning all this, yeah, is to say the first half, Saka and has been criticised. I thought, again, he, he did okay first half. The reason I'm saying this is because I felt the players ultimately let Arteta down in that first half. They were on top of Villa. They had the chances. We could and should have been 2 3 nil up by half time. Game done for me. Second half, the way around. it was an utter capitulation. You mentioned the energy. I couldn't believe it. We looked like we had nothing to play for. We couldn't even, we couldn't even make the game scrappy. Like We couldn't even make it... It was so comfortable for Villa. Una Emery, I don't know what he changed at half time. People on Twitter were telling me he changed nothing. I don't believe them because he must have changed something. How we went from utterly dominating to being completely dominated, I've never seen ever. We went from looking 
a million dollars to utter trash in that second half. We couldn't get the ball. We couldn't even counterattack. The subs made no difference. We didn't even look like we cared. It was such a drop off. And at that point, I felt Arteta let the players down because that's his opportunity to try and impact the game. Recognize that the game's moving away from us, but we're at home. How do you influence it? And he couldn't and he didn't. And I, I look at the whole collective today and I think everyone's got a part to play in this. It was it was so shocking. The reason I feel so disappointed by this result, they can happen. But to play like that for 45, which I did think was good, and then basically have a second half where it, 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 it's, it's meltdown, it's an unrecognisable team, I was just shocked. And it might, you know, two points, six games to go, of course we can do it. But we're probably not going to. We're probably not going and to. Can I just come if, just before Turkish sorry comes back in? The other thing that this point for me as well is the fact that a draw would have been a bad result before kickoff. Yeah, but they couldn't even hang on to a draw because a draw a, a draw makes means that we at least gain a point on Liverpool. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We, we, we don't knock them out of it, but we gain a point on Liverpool. They couldn't even get a draw. It's just not. It's just not good enough. It's just so bad. So bad. Essentially, uh, before church comes in, uh, you know, two two big pressure games. We've been bigging up this defence for a long while now, like, you know, but two big pressure games, Bayern Munich, the Champions League court final, and this game here, completely capitulated. Completely. Four, four goals as well. Oh, poor goals. Gabriel kicking the ball against... <laughs> Yeah, you know, like you know what I mean, and then Ollie Watkins. I, as he shot that, I don't know if you were watching on TV. I thought it was a goal. It was a goal. He looked in. Tillman smashing against the bar. Raya nowhere near it. You know what I mean? Defensively today, an absolute shambles when it really, really mattered, and that's what that's what's hurt me today. I don't even know where to start. I mean, you you know, you've been talking for a good while. Um... Players mentioned, uh, I think Arteta's been mentioned, tactics. Listen, for me, I don't, it's a damning blow, man. It's not over. I'll start with that. It's not over. I think if we win the remaining games we have, every single one of them, I think we win the league because I think Man City do drop points in one game. And even if that includes a draw, I think you know we have the potential to do it on goal difference then. But that aside... I didn't expect to drop points in this game. I expected everyone to drop points. They, they, James, I don't even remember. I don't know if it was yeah. behind the numbers or a show where I said 87 points roughly. I think we'll do it for someone. Yeah, you did. And it's becoming increasingly you know, likely that around that mark, we'll, we'll probably do it. Um, you know, I, I think I, this system-based football has brought the competition back, you know, for Arsenal. It's modern day and, and, and that's what it's all about. But um, there's just something about it that, you know, I, I think quality, and uh, uh, experience and world-class talent differentiates a, a, go, a, a good system from a great system. Mm -hmm. And I think the honest truth is, as much as fans want to argue with it online, we haven't got that player yet or those players yet um by that i mean we might have them in person now but we don't have them in experience yet uh, I, th I think liverpool have more of that sort of person and that sort of character than we have i think we're a better team than them but i do you know i think liverpool have that and that's why they're still in and around the conversation having transitioned the whole midfield in one yeah. summer you know we've we've saw how difficult it's been to ferrari but they've rebuilt the midfield in one summer and competed again mm -hmm. i think you know that's the, the, as much as you know lee started i think with pressure 100 percent, i think pressure is involved but i think when you dissect pressure and, and vary the var variables that can affect it experience is a big variable in my opinion age is a big variable in my opinion and this ain't an excuse <laughs> this ain't an excuse trust me it's just the reality of what i'm seeing you mm -hmm. know my hope and belief you know, if I look player for player, squad for squad, I still think we are, you know, have the third best in the league. I'll be honest. I still, you know, think behind Liverpool and behind City, we still have the third best team squad when you take in everything. 
the experience, the quality, the, the you know, all of that as well. So Arteta's the one that's knitted this together and got it to a place where we're challenging year in, year out now. To, and I can say that because it's two years. And the mm. hope and belief and the feeling now that, you know, we've potentially let it slip is it, it, fucked. I'd, that's for me. I don't even know what to say. I like. I, in all honesty, I look back. And I'm. I'm not. You know. I. We're still in it, but I think when Raya's mentioned, and and I know Havertz has been talked about ahead of a lot this season. I think the transfer window last summer. I look back on it, and I do think we could have done a little bit better in it overall. You know, this next week is a big one. I think this next week is a big one. You know, for that transfer window as well. I think Rice has looked tired the last couple of games, but overall, I think he is the one that that has worked out. One didn't because of injury, not you know, not anyone's fault. But I think overall, we you know we didn't really improve the side. Again, I think Arteta managed to make it work. So Arteta's a great coach, in my opinion. He's a great coach to to bring this side to challenge for a title. With the players that we bought, where the majority of people, both Arsenal fans and opposition fans, at times thought, well, who the hell is this? Why are we buying him? And don't get me wrong, he's got some duds in there. But even the success stories, every single one of them, that's, you know, apart from maybe a Thomas Partey who came in with a reputation, no one else really did. you know. So he's a great coach, but he needs to, he needs to now realise that there's a part of him that has cost him in the last couple of seasons. There's a part of him that's cost him. And that part of him might be the the, the lack of ruthlessness with players that he likes. It's, it's easier being ruthless with players that give you a reason not to like them. And I think Ozil done that. I think Aubameyang done that. Gwenduzi done that. Nketi hasn't done that. Holden hasn't done that. Reese Nelson hasn't done that. Emil Smith-Rowe doesn't seem to have done that. But when it push comes to shove and we need, you know, some of these players to step up and uh, and maybe count, and I'm not blaming it on them, but what I'm saying is we should be able to rotate here. I don't care about starting 11s anymore. I said it on my fan cam because, you know, if what Arteta's done is put this team in a position where, you know, we're winning games and we look solid and structured, whoever plays anywhere, you know, in, in recent times. And by that, I mean 18 months. So I don't really know how to... It's a great point. I think, I think yeah, the point about yeah. the squad... I, I, I'll go with Mikel. You know, he's turned me around. He's made me believe. And uh, I'm very, very confident. But today, you know, you, you have to ask questions. Is it, as in, but Zinchenko's... A, a, sorry, you just reminded me the path I was on. Sorry, I've just got to cut back in there. No, because. Cool. Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus came in at a time when the expectation was Champions League football, you know, and they came in with a buzz. But the reality is, you know, I saw Zinchenko talking to the players in a huddle at the beginning of the game, you know. <laughs> Liverpool games, I'm seeing Van Dijk, I'm seeing Salah, I'm seeing big boys, Alice, you know, I'm seeing big players that have been through big moments. City, the same thing. You know, these players, you know, that you like now, you know, Arteta, he needs to be ruthless with them. Because the final, the final thing, the final things need to be done now, in order to well, well, be able to stand up in these moments. I, I think at the end of the day, he's been a bit of a scapegoat, Chinchenko. If, if I'll be really honest. No, no, he's not Lee. He's not. He's he's not been good. And I don't. I, I, I don't, yeah, also the leader thing. I don't. Buy, just all season. And I don't buy the leader thing as well. I don't buy the he's a leader. I've never ever bought into this thing that he's he's a leader just because you've been at City and just because. Um, he, he speaks out and he he does interviews and he, he revs the crowd up. That doesn't mean you're a leader. I've ne I don't see what he brings to this team this season. Literally, I can't see a positive from him. <laughs> he's I not understanding. He was last season. I'll give you that, but I don't think he was he, he's, he was that bad. Uh, no, he was awful, Lee. Well, um, do you remember? Do you guys remember if, like maybe a few weeks ago when we were talking about maybe it was post Porto? I described um, I described Havertz up front, Jorginho in the six, and Kivior at left back as not being as good footballers as Partey, Zinchenko and Jesus. But they approached the game like they just had a job to do. They just have this like almost blank expression of just like, 
you know, I know, I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, yeah. and I've got a job to do. And you, we started today with Rice back at the six, which obviously I love Declan Rice a bit, but I have always preferred him more as an eight with someone there with him. We started with Zinchenko at left back, and we brought Jesus back in. Now, I love Jesus. I've defended him lots on this podcast, and I wouldn't have started him today, by the way. I felt we needed him more for Bayern than this game, so that was said before. But I was sort of thinking, like, at sort of crucial areas of the pitch, we lost that, like, job-to-do mentality. We looked emotional again. We looked like last season's team, didn't we? Just, yeah. like, just a bit messy, just a bit... And in the first half, he caught the best of that, where it was fast, frantic, football, fluid, brilliant. And the second half, we didn't really know how to deal with the occasion. And I just felt like when we were in that brilliant run and we just knocked out Porto and we'd won nine Premier League games in a row or something like that, I looked at Kivio or Georgina Havertz. I was like, you are not good, as good technically, or maybe not technically, but you're not like you're not seen as as good as the players that were in your place before. But I respected that they just played with like an efficiency, like a calmer mindset. And I felt this week with Bayern in the week, and which, to be fair, slightly disproves my point because Havertz, Georgina, and Kivi all started against Bayern. But I just felt against Bayern and against Villa, the teams looked a little unrecognisable. At times, we've looked brilliant. In both games, we played some great football at times. And you've seen what we can be. But we've just not handled game states as well as we did the last three months, which I found strange because I thought we'd outgrown all that. So, okay. Sometimes, James, you can have too many options. Too many, like, all the players are back all of a sudden, like, you know, you start trying to be too clever with it. You know, like, it was working. You know. Well, have us up front. Yeah, have us up front. Kivya at left back, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's like we panicked because, oh, well, it didn't work against Bayern Munich. That was always my biggest fear. Uh, and one of the biggest things that I've got is, it, you know, if Saka's half fit, right? I'm not having a go at Saka when I say this. If Saka's half fit or he's not, uh, he's, be, he's straight in the team. Straight in the team. Whether you think he's fit or not, man. And there's been times where someone say, oh, he's played Saka, but he's not fit. He does not do that with the other man. Martinelli does not do that with him, like you know, and and I think it's wrong. You know what I mean? Like Martinelli's a big, like, he hasn't been great when he's come in. I've got to say that, like, you know, but it, it, our best front three is with them two as wide players. As simple as that. And you got one rule for one, and one not for the other. And today, I'm you know I'm crying out for Martinelli to start that game today. I said it before. So it, you know what I mean, like, you know, and he brings in Trossard, you know, and he does never do that on the right hand side, never ever. And, and then I'm looking at it today, I'm a, I'm going to say it now, Declan Rice is my favourite player now, he's, he's, he's taken over from Martinelli, but he's absolutely shattered. He, there was a run today when McGinn ran past, he couldn't keep up with him. Six weeks ago, he would have breezed past him and took the ball like, you know what I mean? Like, we're not giving him a rest. So, thank you, Gareth Southgate, for playing him in those two meaningless uh, friendlies, right? It meant that we had to rest him in some sort of game, and he hasn't done it. He hasn't done it. And, uh, you know, the last two games have been, um, they've been massive games for us. Declan Rice hasn't been an influence in either one of them. And it's nothing against Declan Rice. He's shattered. Absolutely shattered. I don't, you know, you can see it today with Odegaard towards the end. He just fizzled out towards the end. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and he brought on Smith Rowe who'd done absolutely nothing in the game. Nothing in the game. You've got, you can't ask these guys to play 10, 15 minutes and try and change your things around. You've got to be, you've got to have faith in them. Rest these players and, 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 and have faith in them. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, I just, I just feel today, you know what I mean, that Mikel has just got it all wrong as well today. Like, um, you know, like I, he really did. Like, I tell you what, Lee, Lee, um, Guna Lee, come out today, and I'll give him his credit for it. I don't know if you see it before. I'm not happy with that team. He said, "I'm going to say it," and, I, and he said to him, "Why?" And he goes, "Because we've changed, we've changed what we're going away from." And he was dead right. We changed. Uh, 
I want. But, but to be fair, Lee, to be fair, I mean, I've got to stick up for it here a little bit. And I'm a little bit with Turkish in the sense that we've got a squad enough. We've, squad enough, we've got a squad now that is good enough that changes shouldn't really affect things too much. And where I defend Arteta is, whatever he had picked, people would have battered him for it. So if he picked the same team, why are you not wrestling and rotating? If he changes it, why okay. are you changing? Okay. So, I, so the, I, I don't think the 11 is where I'm going to where I'm gonna criticise him. Where I will criticise him is tactically. Tactically, I think I think James is bang on. I think that's more where he should get a bit of heat. I don't... Look, would I have played Havertz in midfield? No. Would I have played Zinchenko at left back over Kivior? No. But equally... I, I don't. I think I think it's a bit of a red herring to blast him for changes because whatever he does, we're gonna blast him. Tactically, Unai Emery's got his number. That's the that's the big issue. Unai Emery seems to have his number. That that's that's the thing. But I want to go back to the point that Turkish made about having a, a a type of player that in those pressure moments can just be cold and handle pressure and just get the job done. I I also think I had it in my notes for the last pod. I, I forgot to mention it. One of the things I think City and Liverpool have got, which we don't have, are match winners. We don't actually have any match winners in our team. City have got someone that, if they're not playing well, can just do something and just score a goal out of nothing. Oh, we're 1-0 up. Liverpool have got Salah that, when you're not playing well, can just do something. We're, we're more, as you said, James, more of a team. We haven't got a match winner. Today, we needed a match winner. Someone that could just step up and be like, you know what, we're not playing great, but... I can be the difference. Um, and that goes back to my point about Jesus. I wanted him to be the person this season that in those times we're not playing well. Because we can't play well every game. West Ham 6-0 wasn't that long ago. Burnley 5-0 wasn't that long ago. <laughs> we were battering teams last month. But that was never going to continue forever. And I think we need to, in the summer, to start looking at a player that in those moments can be the difference when we're not necessarily playing um, very, very well. Well, that's what I've, you know. That's what uh, I would have expected. Sorry, James was on mute. He was talking. Sorry, I was. I started. I started rattling off, and I was on mute. Sorry. No, but I just wanted to piggyback off that point, Turkish, that Jordan just made. Like, what's Josko Gavardiol just done in the last few games? Josko Gavardiol, a left back. I don't know a centre back playing left back. He's used his weaker foot and and smacked one in the top corner, and then he's put another one in into the, perfectly into the side netting at the burner bow. So has Phil Foden. So has Bernardo Silva. Didn't Kovacic score a worldie against Luton uh, on yesterday, on Saturday? De Bruyne away at Palace. Like, th there is also a quality that I agree, like a match-winning quality, a I don't need a lot quality to just put this ball in the back of the net. And it does feel with Arsenal sometimes. When was the last time we won a game we didn't deserve to win? Mm. I'm not saying we've never done that. Mm. But how... When I'm, I'm genuinely curious, when was the last time we didn't play well? We went, you know, leads away team. last year. Maybe that one. Again, what did Saka do? Like, rifle one into the roof of the net. But uh, but you know, I, I I don't. I've seen City, and how many times this season we've gone? They don't look quite right. They don't look all that. And we said Liverpool. Are they? Are they really as good? Yeah, the XG and they can see chances. But McAllister the other day when they needed a goal, just rifled one perfectly into the top corner. Where is our bailout? Where's our get out of jail card? Where is our... That's, that's what you pay 300k a week for. I'm, I didn't want to say it because people are going to call me accountants and people... Fuck all that. The reason I bring wages into it is because it applies a hell of a lot of context. Wages, mm -hmm. the highest paid player used to mean that's the difference maker. Mm -hmm. That's the person when, you know, the chips are down, they're going to stand up. You know, mm -hmm. so that's why when you know earlier in the season when we're talking about creating spaces and uh, and aerial jewels and shit, not good enough. This calendar year, okay, improvements good, but overall that transfer did not hit the target whatsoever. People can't forget that it, you know it was a move from midfield into the striker position that that coincided with the upturn in form. The reason why people would stop talking about spaces being created and start talking about goals, assists, real impact in the games from a 300k player. But the reality is, we didn't get that. That's why I'm, you know, I stopped short of of over praising, you know, space creation and aerial duel winning. And I just want to move this away from Havertz a bit because it's not just Havertz. This is a problem with the fan base. In general, we overhype and we over just back every single 
thing to the point where we need to realize that it's just not, you know, the the, the I'm sorry, a man city or 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 um well to be honest, not necessarily Man City because they got a hell of a lot of money to waste, but Liverpool spent a lot of money in certain positions at a time in their process where it looked like it was the final pieces of the puzzle coming together. And it was. In hindsight, you look at it and that was, you know, the, a few big signings at a big moment for them. For us, we need to improve on the same positions that we needed to improve on last year. Striker and eight. And winger. And winger, which is the same position. But I'm talking about striker and eight, the same position that people have been ramming down one particular signing down my neck for the whole season. So, yes, he had a good first half. I don't want to make this. It's not about him, trust me. But at the end of the day, we're talking about a difference maker. We're talking about the lack of it. We're talking about who it may be. When you pay 300k a week to a player, a player that's, you know, in the final third more often than not in a game, that's the player that's meant to do it, not create the space for others to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 no, I, I look, I get it, you know. Do, the, do you know the, what today, right, that's, that I feel really let down is that I, the players and the club and the manager and everything got me believing. I come away from Brighton thinking that we, you know, we was the best team in the league defensively and all that, like, and, and really excited about the big game against Bayern Munich. Uh, uh, and listen, we, we failed there, like, you know, defensively. And I still say it now, if Liverpool would have won today, we would have won today. I, I I'm convinced with that. I'm convinced. It's just the, the, the pressure was on us today. And it, it was a, just a massive foul from the manager, from the players and whatever. It was a massive foul. And I just feel bloody let down. I've, I've believed in this team for the, that they were the best team in the league. I believe that they was going to go and win it. And I do think that even this season, it's going to hurt me more this season than last season because I do believe we're the best team in the league this season. I believe that we're better than Man City. I believe that we're better than Liverpool. But when I now know that we're not because when it really bloody matters... We get let down, you know what I mean? Like I, the last two games, our two centre halves look like Mustafi and Scalacci. Scalacci, yeah, they have done in the last couple of games. They have done when it's really mad. They've looked like you know. I thought Rob Holding was back playing again, like you know, and you know the goalkeeper. It's been. I'm, I'm sorry, people keep. I, I've just reading the comments just now. You've got an agenda again. I ain't got a fucking agenda against Raya. I want him to be great. But at the end of the day, he's not fucking great, boys. He isn't. He isn't. When it matters, he's not there. And I'm, I'm sorry, if you're going to get rid of a goalkeeper like Ramsdale, bring in somebody great. I looked at Alisson today. Like That's what you want. Something like that, a save out of nothing that wins you a game. All right, he didn't win today, but you know what I'm saying? Like something that gets you, gets you it. Like you know, like Martinez today, fucking rejects today. He is from us. Wins in the game with a save. When is Raya going to do that for us? When is he going to make a, a game changing save for us? And you go, that's what we got him for. I see it with Martinez today, and I can't help it, lads. I'm just walking out of the ground today and you see him celebrations, what he's doing and all that like, you know, come on. This is not, I think, you know what I mean? this is not what, what happened. What happened? What's that? What was, because what's this? Emmy Martinez was just sort of giving it the, you know, with the Villa fans. It was, was, crowd, like, you know what I mean? like, it was only like Aston Villa fans in there and about five Arsenal fans like that, but it doesn't matter. It, I, I'm, I'm sorry. When it matters, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I I'm, I'm going to be really honest. A fella come up to me today. I'm in a restaurant. Turned around and said to me, "Lee, what has da what has David Raya done to make and change Arsenal Football Club? What has he done?" What, and I, I, you know, what I mean, like, I'm going, "Well, he's done this and he's done." I'm trying to argue a fact of it, and if he hasn't, I think, he hasn't I think, any better or any worse. 
I, th I think I think he's got qualities that 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 are that are good. I, I think his his uh, aerial. Uh, Never look at the goal, Nigel. Never look at the goal. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm just talking generally. He's not a Please, bad keeper. Look at that That's when I'm asking you, goalkeeper. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Do I'm with something. You. I'm with you. I'm, I, that, I started with David Ray. I, like I said, I, I've not Can seen a moment from him. I'm I'm not disagreeing. I'm actually just asking. What which bit with the first goal should he have done better? You saying the cross into the box, he should have dealt with it. I I, I haven't really seen it too much, but yeah, I do. I I don't know, uh, James. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at it and I'm thinking like, do so. so you know, he done a great save at Brighton the other day. I've got to say that, like, you know what I mean? I, it was a, a, a one nil, I think that was. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's great. But this is a game today when you just want him to just, you know what I mean? Prove, prove everybody right. Mm. Prove everybody right. Yeah, he hasn't done it. That's my problem. James, sorry, on the goal. I mean, I operate on the basis that anything inside the six-yard box, the yes. keeper's got to take. Anything outside, the keeper still should. But defenders could arguably be more culpable. Well, across his six-yard box. Anything yeah. six-yard box. I'm sorry. You, yeah, you've got to, you've got I to just thought our shape was a mess. I saw Zinchenko hanging around centre backs and right. Was right was he? Rice is at the back post, and I actually can't remember how we got into that situation. I don't know if it was a set piece. Uh, you know, I just blanked it out. I don't know how we got into that situation, but you're thinking that's not right. You know, no one at the back post for an easy tap in. Then, um, then save the second one. I know it's a. Oh, I know that like, you're going to turn around at me and go, "He's fucking." No, dead. I agree. I agree with you because because save it because you know, do something. Do you, do you know, know what? Do you know, do you know what it was like? So, sorry, sorry, Jay. Do you know what it was like? It was like Onana's save against who was it last week? A Liverpool player went through one on one. It was early yeah. in the game. Who um, was it? Yes, yeah, Sir Bosley. Um, Sir I think it was yeah, Sir Bosley. Bosley. Yes, that's, and, 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 and Onana has got to do that. Sorry, Ryan's got to do that save. Exactly that, Joel. Yeah. Exactly that. Save. He doesn't do it any time. He didn't do it on Wednesday or Tuesday, and he didn't do it today. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's my problem with him. Like, I'm not having a go at him when I say this, but please get us. That's what you're there for. And yeah, it's I, frustrating. So no, so okay, so so okay. I actually agree. I thought the way Jordan worded it was perfect. You know, yeah. sometimes your goalkeeper has to bail you out because we've got a terrific back four that have been looking after and protecting him. He does his fair share of claiming crosses and all that. And great, that's all part of it. His distribution sometimes may be good, sometimes may be shit. You don't know what you're going to get from David Ryan in that sense. But I totally agree. You know, Arsenal, they he makes the... So let's look at Bayern in the week, yeah? He comes out and he causes a panic with Gabriel. And that creates this domino effect that we talked about in the last pod. Yeah. But after all that, and Bayern have cut through us, can you not let the ball go through your legs? You know, you know. Can you can you just go? My bad, guy. I, I, I cocked up, but it's cool. I've saved us. You no, know, one one. And and I actually agree with you on that second one because the minute Villa got that first goal, you knew they were going to go. We've got our goal, got our lead. Let's see if we can hold out. Now, what was that minute 84, 85? Listen, I'm not saying we were going to turn it around. The way we played the second half was appalling, but at least give yourself a fucking chance. And Watkins was quicker than Smith Rowe with the ball at his feet. Was it Smith Rowe who was chasing back? Yeah, yeah, it was. With the yeah. ball at his feet, because he does have the head start on him, to be fair, because he's onside because he's in his own half. Smith Rowe basically gets back, but he doesn't. He can't block, he can't make a challenge. And then actually Watkins goes for the dink. Smith Rowe, I think, gets a deflection that almost takes it more on goal. But Raya, again, is just, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you done me. And it's like, you know... It's not a Raya like it's not a Raya error, but it's also like, can you just bail us out for one of them, please? Yeah, exactly. um, I'm not but, having a go at Raya when I say that. It's just and, just, I, and I'm saying all this to say that Raya's not the reason we didn't win. That second half was disgusting, man. It was awful. But I understand what you guys are saying on this. Something happened in that second half though that was really concerning from like a. You know, one defeat in 12. Like, the bigger picture is 10 wins and a draw and a defeat. Mikel Arteta, I think, said in a post-match, he said, any other league, you put that form together, you're six, seven points clear. Now, I don't know about all the other leagues. I'm a casual. But I think the the principle 
might no, but the principle yeah, might be right. But you know? The principle nah, probably but, is right, but we're not in Spain. We're not no, in no, Germany. Course, but I'm just what, what I'm saying. Is, I think what he's saying is some perspective. We've been brilliant and we've had one bad day, and even that draw for me, we all know. Our had a bad right? week, James. It's not a bad day. Okay, I'm in the Premier League. I'm in the Premier League. Yeah, the Premier League. Premier League. Premier League. game was piss poor as well. Yeah, from- I know. I, I know. I'm talking the Premier League. In the Premier League, yeah. this calendar year, we've had one bad day, and it feels like it's thrown away. Imagine that one bad game in the whole of 2024 in the Premier League, and it feels like it's cost us the title. And that is the level we are coming up against. But I can. Fi- I I can. It's hard, and it's and it hurts. I could stomach it if that second half was almost anything like the first yeah. half and we got done on the counter trying to win it and whatever, and maybe a moment of magic. But something happened in that second half, guys, where Villa outplayed us. Yeah, We couldn't get on the ball. We couldn't put a tackle in. We couldn't get near them. We couldn't even drop into a good enough shape to deny them chances and at least do something on the counter attack. And that's really concerning. You can lose a game of football because their ball fell in in the net and ours didn't like that can happen but how did Uno Emery and Aston Villa turn what was a total backs against the wall first half into a you know possession knock it about tick attack a ball you know switch it play through the lines run our back four get shots from distance hit the cross by hit the post and then walk away with an utterly deserved 2 nil win how did that happen people I'm Look, lost I- I, I don't I, know how this happened. Let, let, let's let's try let's try and try the operative word there to try and put this into context and put a bit of a positive spin on. It's been a bad week, right? It's not terminal, but I think we will agree we're not going to get we one out of this Premier League season. As Turkey said, this next week is a massive week, and I actually think that the Bayern game will play a big bearing on the Wolves game on the weekend. I think if we knock out if we get knocked out by Bayern Munich in whatever circumstance. I think that's going to massively affect um, the, the Wolves game. If we beat Bayern, you'd think we, we bounce into the into the Wolves game. Let's go. We can go top of the league on the weekend. City have got a cup game. And then it's, you know, we're, we're back in the mix. We so played twice before City play again. And why do we... There, there, there you go. Go on, Turkish, go on. I've got to bring it back a little bit. Sorry, but like that second half, yeah, really annoyed me because... Yeah, I know. It, it's kind of like a, it, it was a now or never half. Mm. And we showed no fight, no mm. heart, no desire, no determination, no will, no drive, no nothing. No hurt. And why? Even why hurt we, And I think this is the flip side of this system-based football. It's so robotic that at times it does look like there's little emotion involved. When I think emotion is a key part of, of sports at times, if not most of the time. I've got to see that you care. If you went out fighting, if you was gone going gung ho for it at nil nil, and we get caught out on the counter, listen, I'd still be gutted. I'd still be probably you know moaning and talking shit, but I'd understand it a bit more. I don't understand how it's nil nil, and you're not showing anything, nothing. I'm not even talking about on the ball here. I'm talking about off the ball too. I'm talking about in your facial expressions. I'm talking about in your mannerisms. I'm talking about when we conceded. What did you do? Fucking hell, I was nearly praying for a huddle again. Because they just seemed so disjointed and so disconnected. I was thinking, hold on, what? Like, what are you, what's going on? Like, where's the soul gone? Because we fought for games before till the very end. In this game here, and I'm Strictly talking about this game here before people clip this and use or to take the context out of it, like I'm talking about the season, I'm talking about this game. Where was the soul in this game? Where was our like our heart? Where was where, uh, that's the biggest thing for me? Yeah, because if that is the reason, if it, if the reason is the pressure, if the reason is the inexperience, if the reason is a lack of emotional awareness or a lack of whatever, then we're not going to do it against Bayern. But silly me, I actually think there is some hope against Bayern. Hmm, so. well, I, I think there is two Turkish, and I, I, I think you're right. I think the comparison is the West Ham game. We lost at home 2-0 this season? Was it this season or last season? Yeah. This season. We lost 2-0 at home, but we tried. 
we battered them. Yeah. There was intensity. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That's a great example. Yeah. That, it was embarrassing. Don't get me wrong. But at least we went out on our swords and they caught us on the counter. And we slagged them all off after. <laughs> we, did, we did. We did. We did. Huh. We did. But th that, that's the way you lose a 2 0 game. This, this to Touch's point, I agree. There was nothing there. It was so flat. It was so flat. And I, but, but I think going forward, look. Because this is that one, you can go back. Sorry, John, but that one, you look, can look. go back and say, you we missed chances. Mm. This one. Didn't create any. We, we bottled it. There is no other explanation for that second half. We put our emotions in a bottle, the heart, fight, hunger, desire, all of that. Closed it. That, that There was nothing in that second half. I just don't get why. It was dead. It was dead. I'm trying to put a positive spin on it, but no one wants to really hear it. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna shut up now and just and, and defer because it's, it's it's a bad night. It's a bad night. But what I was gonna say was just that if you're a big team, there's no time to sulk. There's no time for sulking now. We've got a big, big game on, on Wednesday. Get your mind right, get this out of your system, work out how you're gonna beat Bayern Munich, and let's get our season back on track. We can sulk. And I mean, we as in the football team as well. We can sulk and oh, feel sorry for ourselves and we can limp out of the season third and quarterfinal. We can do that. Or we can actually fight and we can put right that second half against Bayern Munich. And Bayern Munich are going to be on it as well. They've lost the league. They're going to be on it. So we're going to be in for a fight. And I think to Turkish's point, we've got to show not only quality, but we've got to show that we care. We've got to show that actually we still want to win the Champions League. That's only going to happen, I think, if we park today or yesterday now and actually focus on, actually, this can still be a good season. Otherwise, it's going to be a really long five weeks coming up for the club and for the fan base. Do you, do you know what, Jordan? That's a fantastic point. And I walked away from that ground yesterday. Uh, today. I want to see Arsenal produce a away performance like Aston Villa shows in us today. Gone to the top team. Outdone us, outfought us. Defended fantastically well, and and done us. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you, I'm going to give Aston Villa. I've got to say, great credit for today. I thought they was outstanding. They looked dangerous every time they went forward. They looked dangerous uh, every time they went. They went forward. They panicked us. They had a structure. And I want to see us go to Bayern Munich and do exactly the same. Now, can Arsenal and Mikel Arteta do that? Can they? I don't think they can, but that's what I want to see. Well, like, yeah. this group needs its moment. Like, it needs... It, need a mo it they needs a it, moment, James. It it, needs they, a moment. Need, they need their... And, and actually, I know I keep referencing it more because I'm quite a self-deprecating individual, but when I celebrated the draw with City, it was because we stayed ahead of them. And I thought that was so important. A lot of people said we needed to win there to win the title. Look, proving like that's probably true. But I just thought staying ahead of them was massive because it's yeah. so difficult to go there and win. But this team at some point needs its moment. It needs its like, wow, you just went there and won. And I know that contradicts how I felt after the Etihad, but that is because I just hold Man City and Pep Guardiola in just like a, a league of its own. But like, when are we going to, like, a win at Anfield or a win at, if you go to the Allianz and don't even have to win a 90, knock them out on pens. I don't, but if you come through that night into the semi-final and you're that team that went, we went to the Allianz and we came out with a place in the semi-final of the Champions League, I think the team needs this moment that says, that, that tells them, like, we really belong. And I think at home... The results are massive, beating Liverpool, beating City and all that. And obviously going undefeated at Anfield and Etihad, that's all massive. But what I saw today was a team that like, I don't know. I After the way that second half went and knowing that we've got this game coming against Bayern, I think it's really important we win. I'm Not just to keep our season alive, but we need it's it. It's massive because it's, it's, it's our only chance. The group needs it. We've got, you know, if we're going to win... win I know this sounds silly when people say that the Champions League is in our own hands. You know, I mean, we 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 can, you know, we we can win some uh, win in Bayern Munich and then beat whoever we play in the next round. And we're, we're it's not in our hands now. We can win every single game in the Premier League and we ain't going to win the league, right? But, but there's still if we, if we if we produce a moment on Wednesday night, we can still win win something. 
and and I think that this is this is it now. Uh, Wednesday night comes down, you know. I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's everything, and I, I didn't think that a week ago. I always thought it was a Premier League, but now, um, this is this is the game. This is the game, boys. This is the game. Everybody's saying same old Arsenal. See, told you, same old Arsenal. And you know what? They're probably right. Yeah, win, on Wednesday, win, win on Wednesday, it changes that. It changes yeah. that. We can reframe our season and how people see us if you knock out by Munich in Munich. It's, they're beatable. They are beatable. It's not going to be an easy game, but they are beatable. But my big thing is get over your sulk. Get over it. <laughs> I don't want to go into that game in Germany sulking. Go in there with a spring in your step. You know what? We're good. Let's have it. Let's have it. Come on, then. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's have we need it. the let's personalities fight. to come to the fore. We've got now. to fight. We've got to yeah. fight. We, we need Saliba and Gabriel. We know are immensely talented. Are you? Mm -hmm. Have you? Have you got the metal now mentally for the Allianz and what you, is the key. you know? Declan Rice. We know that guy can cover grass like anyone, and we know he's in an insane. You know, insane midfielder in so many, but and now have you, you, you know, the Allianz away, Erdegaard, are you, you know, Saka, Martinelli, Martinelli. I need Martinelli to, to, I mean, help if he was played, obviously, but what an info Martinelli would do for this team. I just, I, I, I think they all need to be in that dressing room going, that is it, every, everyone. We've, we've lost a grip on, we've lost that control of our destiny in the title race. And we are now going to the away leg in the Champions League after a 2 2 draw at home. So the expectation is that we win neither of them. So fuck me, leave it all out there. The other like, reason why. Yeah. So the other reason why today was disappointing is because we haven't got that many home games left. <laughs> we haven't got that many home games left. So that was something I thought today. That might be a well. blessing, you know. It we look be. so weird be. at home sometimes. Yeah, we're not the greatest at home. We're not. And I'll tell you what, I never, thought, I, I never thought we was going to slip up at home. I looked at our own games and said, that's where we're not going to see that. But we, we look back at our own form this season. Spurs, Fulham, hmm. this one. Um, West Ham. West Ham. Not good enough for the Premier League, you know what I mean? Like, you cannot go four home games and not, and not win, you know what I mean? Lose one, lose two, and draw two. You can't do that. You you got to be like. If you have a look at the other two teams. I think that's Liverpool's first defeat today. Like you know, that's. You know, and also, when you look at the the points we've dropped at home, Fulham, Tottenham, West Ham, Aston Villa, ain't good enough, boys. Um, it's something not quite. It was like it last season. Something's not been improved on that. Like you know, and and you can't. I know I've had to go a little bit of the fans today, but the atmosphere in general has been fantastic. Um, we shouldn't we shouldn't be as vulnerable as we are at home as we as we have been, and you know it will be our home form that's going to ultimately cost us in the Premier League this season. We got to win. That's uh, that's how I feel about the buying game, man. We got to win. Yeah. For for all the reasons I think James just said, no, it's. Otherwise, otherwise, you know, we've fallen at all the hurdles that everyone expected us in terms of everyone. I mean, opposition fans expected us to at the start of the season. Mm -hmm. Once we get one of the big boys in the Champions League and once the business end of the season comes in, nothing would have been different. Yeah, We've, we've got to do it. Declan Rice spoke recently about changing that narrative about us. So he knows, they know, you know, they hear it, they listen, they read about it. You know, they know the perception. I'm not saying that's down to them or all down to them, but they know the perception. It's them. To, it's up to them to change. I actually have to give Arteta credit for his post-match interview today. Not yeah. often do I. Not often do I watch them, but this one I just wanted to watch just to just to see. And he, uh, in my opinion, yet again, um, he was honest. He said, "You know, we we have to be. You know, we have to bounce back." You know, no point in win, 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 loss, and then it all crumbles. He said we're not strong enough then. Mm -hmm. So, he, you know, he, he's essentially saying the same things that we are and did say last season and, and yeah. you know, will say if it all crumbles from here now. So no one should look at us and say, oh, it's so negative. Cheer up, calm down. It's still all to play for. The manager saying the same thing. At the end of the last season, Odegaard and Arteta both came out. Final game of the season, post. They both said disappointing. Disappointed. They didn't start with how good the first 30 games were. They started with disappointed. Why? Because they want to win too. 
Uh, we have to bounce back. We must bounce back. I, I will say, as pissed off I am with Arteta and, and criticising and all that, let's back him on this. You know what I mean? I'm still with him. You know, hundred I mean? percent. He's made a, he's made a mistake. He's made mistakes today, um, but he still put me in a position where I thought that Arsenal wouldn't be for a for a very very long while. I'm still proud of the team. I'm still proud of the club. I'm still proud of everything that we've achieved so far. It might not be good enough to win us the league, but I go to every game looking forward to it and believing that we can win. And that's why I'm hurting today because we've lost because. I, I genuinely thought that we was going to win today, like. But there have been times, there have been times when I've actually thought that <laughs> we ain't going to win. And um, yeah, there's going to be question marks on Mikel come the end of the season. But you know, I do genuinely believe, and I said it today in front of a few people. I genuinely still believe that he will take us to the promised land, um, and I'm going to back him for that. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. People are going to take the mickey of him. People are going to question whatever he's done and whatever like. And I'll get the out. And I've got the ump with him at the moment. If I see him there, I'd slap him. I simply, <laughs> slap him, you know what I mean, like you know. But um, for me, there's still he's still the man. I think he can get it done. What do we do against Bayern? Then how do we set up? Um, because I think go back to base. Go back to what's been winning this game, Turkish. I know this is my big beef with Mikel, right? It didn't work against Bayern Munich. And I did say before this, before the team shit, don't let that affect what we've done. We still played well against Bayern Munich. I'll tell you that now. Watch the game back. We still played well. We, we, we missed chances. We made mistakes. Don't change things. He changed things today, and I can't believe that he done it like. But for me now, Jorginho <laughs> comes back into midfield. And, and Rice, that's your, your two there, like, you know what I mean? Odegaard, your front three now is your choice, whether you play um, Havertz or um, Jesus. I don't care who you play, like, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, your two wide players and your two best players, and that's Martinelli and uh, Saka. And if I'm going to be really honest, if you want to play Shinchenko at your, that's, that's your prerogative. For me, I play Tommy Asu there, like, but um, that midfield don't change it again, like. I, I think that was a massive mistake today, like. I don't care what anybody says. Kai Everts has been fantastic for us up front. I'm not saying he's a bad move for us and all that, but we we didn't have that, you know. When someone like John McGinn is dominating and winning our midfield, something not, not something's not right. <laughs> something's not right. <laughs> It's it's, yeah. a, it's a good question though because I I don't know the answer Turkish. I mean, do I we go punch for punch and like from minute one put it on them, or do we actually say, well, no, hang on a minute, it's ninety minutes. The pressure's on you guys. We're gonna we know we can defend well. We sit in and try to counter. I genuinely I, I'm, I'm play split. party. I play party first. Play party. Do we not think Arteta might be done with him? He's not wanted to start him other than Luton. Well, I, can't, I think if he wanted to use him in this game, James, he would have played him more times. I don't know, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, that, yeah, I feel you. I'm just saying what I would do, I think. No, I hear it. I, I hear it, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be ob objective if, he, if he'd done it, but... All right, well, you, I think the team needs to be based on two things, and this is not bloody rocket science. It might be the one of the most obvious dumb things I'm ever going to say, but... You need to put out the back four that is most likely to stifle Bayern, the midfield that is most likely to compete with what they do best, and the attack that is most likely to catch them cold. And that, for me, the balance is Tom Yasu comes back in. Yep. Um, because we need to nullify their threats um, with Gabriel Saliba White. I was thinking Jorginho, but you know what? Roll the dice on Thomas Partey. Just go, let's see. And if you're not up to it, you bring Jorginho in. But I think you've got to give Rice that license to cover the grass and to be our N'Golo Kante where he can press if he needs to, he can recover if he needs to, he can cover three positions. We need a monster class from Declan. And Parse probably supports him better in terms of the amount of space he might need. So, so yeah, Parte, Martinelli and Saka because we just need raw pace going the other way. And then Erdegaard, 
and I'd roll the dice on Jesus. I do agree that this calendar year, it's been with Havertz up front that we've looked our most complete as a unit. Um, but why do I just have this feeling that Jesus could win us the game? He could lose it for us as well, but he could win it. Um, whereas Havertz, I feel like, won't win us the game. He will be a part of a cohesive performance if we're on the... Do you get what I'm saying? Havertz can facilitate Arsenal playing really well. There's a good chance we don't play well out there. There's a good chance we just need something in the moment. And I, and I think of Jesus twisting with two severe defenders round him and rolling Martinelli through on goal. And then having the ball one-on with the defender, cutting inside and putting it in the far corner. I look at those Jesus moments on the Champions League stage. Not an easy place to go, Seville. And I think that is that unpredictability. You could be dog in this game, but you could also look world-class. <laughs> and I'm willing to roll the dice on Jesus. So that would be my team. I, I, I I shout. Yeah, I'm cool with that team, actually, as well. I, my final point would be to just not panic. It's 90 minutes plus possible extra time. Yeah. We don't, we don't have to win it in the first half. What you don't want to do is go 2 0 down in the first half because then you're just chasing and they'll pick you off and they've got the players to kill you. It could get embarrassing again. So, my thing would be play the game in phases 20 minutes, get to half time, get to an, you know 60 minutes, then play the last half an hour in of itself and see where you are. You don't have to win it in the first half. So, you know, just whether, whether we go punch for punch or we sit in and catch them on the counter, we'll, we'll, we'll see what he what he decides to do. But just be smart about it. This Bayern team is beatable. And I think this is our season on the line. This this game is our season for me. I think if we lose, I think we tail off. I think we tail off. I think if we win, I think it gives us a real good kick for the next next couple of games. Um, so, yeah, just, just, just be smart about how we play the game. Mm. Uh, well, let's bring up the prediction table. No change there because no one saw that loss coming against Villa. But and now that's behind us, it's time to look forward. We've spoken about Bayern. Give us your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Put the notification bell on. You know the order of the table. James taught me second, Lee third, Jordan fourth. <clears throat> James, kick us off with a prediction at the Allianz. 1 1. We go through on pens. So one one after ninety. Didn't you say one nil when we go through it on pens against Porto as well? Yeah, one one. Um, I get eighty percent of my predictions wrong, and that's probably kind. You know, like, you know what's funny here is like over the years, all I've tended to be is real about what I think. Like, I've never put anything on or forced anything or over, <laughs> over, emphasized anything on purpose. I've just said what I've felt and that's labelled, you know, that's left me with a negative pessimistic tag um, and other things along those lines that are probably, that will probably demonetize us if I get into it. Um, Join the club. <laughs> but I'm going to be real here and, and say, I, for some reason, I still think we're going to beat them. I still think we're going to go through. And I, you can call me crazy, call me stupid, call me delusional. There's just something that tells me that we're going to do it. Um, I thought it before the Villa game. The Villa game has it hampered it? It hasn't hampered my belief we can, whether we will or not. I'm a bit dubious, more so now, but I still think we can. And I'm gonna go with 2 1 Arsenal on the, on the 90 minutes. Lee 2 1 Bayern, 2 1 Bayern. Yeah, I think <laughs> what I mean, we had the chance at home, we need to be in front in the game. I, I'm, I'm... I think this is my third season doing this. That might be the first time I've ever seen Lee predict yeah. an Arsenal defeat. I, yeah, I don't very, I, I, I very rarely predict an Arsenal defeat. I don't think I ever have done. I don't think you, you should, have, mate. You should have seen us in the uh, the lockdown season. Oh, every week. <laughs> I think we'll nick a draw. It's home to Burnley. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I, I just think that we, we, we've... We've we've messed up, you know. Do you know what someone said to me today, which is a really good point. I'm the shining and wow. So a couple of lads, a good, a good 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 laugh, had a few beers, and we, you know, no good luck. And they said, "There's always a week of hell at the Arsenal, and this is it." You know what I mean, like, and 
he's right. We're, 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 there's always a week of hell at the Arsenal, and this is hit like, you know what I mean? So, um, right. there you go. 1-1, one, 2-1 one, one either way, Jordan. 2-2, uh, two, two, but I think Arsenal will go through. Two, two. Harry, they will score. Harry Kane will score. But I think we've got weapons that can hurt them as well. Um, I need to see it. I think it'll be dramatic. I think it's going to be a really dramatic match. It'll take a lot out of us. I want to see Declan Rice at the end. And his, his hairy chest, and his shirt over his shoulder. and I want to see this one from Rice and Bakaya Saka on the floor, knackered. I think I think we will do it. I mean, I'm aware they got some ballers. Let's let's be very clear about that. You look for their team. Their teams like there's they're, they're, they're ballers, but they're not playing well. They're not playing well. So I don't really care how many ballers you've got. If you're not playing well, you can be beaten. And I know they're at home, but we've got to just grow up. This is a this is a grow up moment to Saka. This is a grow up moment to Martin. This is a grow up moment to Saliba. This is a grow up moment. Do you know what I mean? Let's yeah. take this moment and let's let's come out of there with a win and let's get our season back on track. No excuses. Yeah, that's something that tells me we're going to go through. Also tells me Saka's going to have a big game. I, mm. Again, I don't know what it is, but let's just hope it's, it's right. Um, so all the predictions are in 2-2 from Jordan, 1-1 one, one from James, 2-1 Bayern from Lee and 2-1 Arsenal from myself. Let us know yours, comment section, and let us end with comments of the day. Everyone good to go? Yeah, so I've slightly cheated. I've, I actually got mine from um, the FCM pod only because it just made me laugh and I've not had a lot of fun today. They said last time James was this upset was when Sirius Black died. <laughs> and, if, and if you know your Harry Potter, you know the reference. Can and I, it cracked me up. Can I just try and... Um, Jordan Lee... Do, do you accept? Do you accept the comment being taken from another podcast? It's pushing no. it. It's pushing yeah. it. It's pushing I've it. done it before. You've never had a problem with it. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't topped by a few points before, mate. So. Oh, <laughs> this is what we're doing. All right. What so time did Lee arrive for the podcast at twelve? <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very true, Jordan. What do you agree with that? Oh, you, you was late, Lee. You was late. Yeah, but I did say that. Then there was no confirmation. I did say that I was out tonight. Like, I mean, you did, you did, you did. I'm going to back me on this one. Thank you very much. I did say I was going to be out. Couldn't promise what time I'd be on, but I would get home as quickly as I could, and I did. Up yours, James. That's not. That's no defence. I'm sure you did your best. But you know, Arsenal did their best, and they lost. I did my best. Did my best. Wasn't good enough. <laughs> well, do what the fuck you want. I don't care. <laughs> ah, take, this take, take, take it off then. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, that's a bit, it's, it's poor. Yeah, I've got it from another. I've got it from another. Well, we've done that. We've done that before. Well, I don't know that before. I'm sorry, I'm we have. We've definitely done it before. We've gone, oh, this one was funny. But to be fair, that might have been because it was a comment about Forever Arsenal. But anyway, never mind. Ah, well, point deducted. We've agreed. Yeah, it's a point. Yeah, it's a point. Oh, yeah, it's good. whatever. I can't be bothered to argue with you miserable bastards. Just get on with it. <laughs> Guy took a fucking comment from a new podcast. He fucking comes to bring it to the uh, table. Yeah. We, we, we can't verify it as well. well. well reference, was quite good. <laughs> reference was good. All right, fair enough. Yeah, wanker. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll go next. I've got one here from Arsenal Bra. It says here, Jordan apparently seen leaving the Emirates Stadium with his iPad after the fifth minute. Was heard complaining about no Wi-Fi and lack of charging points at the stadium. Was later seen logging into his Netflix account in an internet cafe on Holloway Road. <laughs> the, the man who DM me now, like asking me for recommendations on Netflix or am I watching Arsenal or watching... I don't know, some Netflix program. Makes me laugh. Anyway, I like that one. Yeah, nice. I, I've gone one. I actually <laughs> asked Ryan. I actually asked Ryan for the photo as well, like you know what I mean? Because thumbnail mag mugshot of judges, especially had me thinking I clicked on to Crime Watch the video by accident, like you know what I mean. I actually have a look at that line, like, it does make me look out of there and I weren't too happy, like you know. So uh thanks for that, Ryan. I never even noticed that. Where was this one? On the fun there, if you have a look at it. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, he's actually stitched me up, Ryan. Like, I thought he was my mate. It's because oh, I put him number two and not number one, because Joe's my number one. Like, you know what I mean? He absolutely stitched you me up. You always slag off, Joe. No, I love Joe. Might be a good time to let you know that I do the thumbnails. 
<laughs> I thought you knew. I... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's made my night, that is. I'll tell you what. <laughs> now, now, why doesn't that surprise me, you asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ryan, you're still number one. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. Uh, uh, to be honest, I took this one out because it's not often we, we put in nice comments about people um, on comments of the day, but judging by, yeah, what's happened in the last few minutes, I, I don't know if I should have gone for something different. But, alas, here we are. Perth Aussie Guna said, guys, I've got to be honest and admit, Lee and Turkish have always been my favourite two guys from AFTV, but his pod and the few before... I really love James. Very honest, no bias, critics and praise of all players. Well done, James. Love <clears> you <throat> all from Perth, Australia. Nothing about Jordan, no, no nothing, nothing for me. He no. said love you all and he didn't say not this including Jordan. So I'd Thank say you for that lovely comment. Oh, it's, God, like, it's like having a point back. back. He's, he's, uh, I've got to say, James has become, you know, a, a star on the show. He's like, yes. like that. He's really Shut up, Lee. You took a point from me at your first opportunity. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> no, I'd be I, the Voldemort in my life. When people go, James is a wanker and want to fall asleep, I go, no, no, I'm only making a bad time. <laughs> no, no, no. No, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> you know, people oh, no. keep telling me, Lee, they, I don't know why. I've heard this so many times. They're like, James, if we win the league, you've got to get Lee on tactical insight to break down how we won the league. And I'm like, why? Why would I disgrace our audience like that with some <laughs> subpar analysis? Yeah, uh, you know, I got another. I got another WhatsApp from from Graham this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. I'm WhatsApp from Graham. <laughs> and so it's like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like a Monday morning, it's guaranteed, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like a Monday morning, it's guaranteed. <laughs> I can't lie, I don't think I'd, I'd be ending this pod laughing, but here we are. It's, it's funny because I know what he means. When you get a message from someone, it's just unread. <laughs> so I've got, I've got an image now, it's like 20 unread messages yeah. from Graham. <laughs> he must realise that it's unread, but he still sends it. I'll tell you what, like. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> Me is absolutely fucked. Uh, we're going to round it off here, people. It is half past one. Yes, oh, one thirty a.m. Well, yeah, oh, Lee's all right. Ah, uh, big up, jo- um, Jordan, Lee, and James. As always, hit the like button, people. Make sure you subscribe. Not the best of results. Not the best of weeks. It all starts again next week, um, and it starts with Bayern Munich. We'll be there for it and we'll be there after it. So I'll make sure you're subscribed. We'll be back on Thursday, people. Love for the love as always and hope to see you and talk to you then. Peace.